an advantage spiritual position. You know, in a war, position is everything. We are to be where we are supposed to be for us to win the war. You know, in the Asian region, I know you're familiar with what China is doing with its neighboring country like Taiwan and the Philippines. And when they proclaim their intention of conquering or occupying Taiwan, nations that are in ally with Taiwan, including the USA and the Philippines, have started uh, to send and position themselves in different strategic locations such as the Philippines, so that when the occupations begin, Allied forces and countries uh, have already positioned themselves to have an advantage in the war. You know, war is, is never a good thing, and nobody wants it. But it is something, we could say, necessary to defend one nation on their lands and of their people. Uh, remember, during the World War II, America sent the military, their milita your military army to the Philippines to liberate us from the Japanese. And today is Memorial Day and we do celebrate the bravery and the heroism of our men in uniform during that time. And because of, of their bravery and heroism, they were ready to liberate us from the Japanese. But you know what? Many soldiers were fine Christian. They did not just come into our 7,641 islands with their rifles, but they came also with their Bibles. Amen. You know, Batahan is uh, located in the uh, central part of the Philippines. It is well known during the World War II because it is where the death march started, where the Japanese made thousands of American and Filipino soldiers to walk to their death camp over a 100 kilometer trek from, from Bataan Peninsula to Kapastarla. But you know what? That time, many of my people got saved because of the men in uniform. Amen. And many of my people came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are a byproduct of that missionary Amen. labor. We are part of your history. And we are one of the ben beneficiary of the heroism of your men in, uh, your, uh, men in uniform. And you know what, as Christian, what do you think is responsibility nowadays? Our responsibility hasn't changed. Our responsibility is to go to all nations. In Matthew 28, 19 says, uh, the Bible says to go to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things and whatsoever God commanded you. You know, we are now witnessing all over the world how confused the people are and how the world are really in need of the gospel of God. Uh, God gave us four biological children, but on top of that, God allowed us to love uh, more than 20 children in the last 20 years. We have thousands, we have millions if not thousands of uh, unfortunate children in the Philippines. And uh, our ministry started with, the, with the street children. We started with six children in our first service. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The following Sunday, God gave us 30. And after several years, that church grew from six to 500 in attendance. Amen. And out of the church, we already sent out more than 20 uh, preachers. And right now, we are running a Babu College. And they are now ready, not just to, to, to start a ministry in that 7,000 islands, but many of them are now praying to go to Cambodia, to Thailand, to China. And we are committed to send the gospel of peace, not only in the Philippines, but around the world. And as I always say, you know, you are blessed here in America. God did favor you beyond measure. Not only in the physical realm, but more so on the spiritual realm. When I say that, it is because of the presence of the churches and the abundance of uh, men and women of God that are serving the Lord. And may I encourage you today to use that abundance that God has given you for you, 
for the people of America to be more rooted in faith and to grow more and to live in grace. You know what? The reason why, why communism hasn't been very successful, their, their ultimate goal is to turn the world into communism. But they haven't been successful because of us who are spreading the powerful words of God. But you know what? The enemies, as we can see, they are not stopping. They are determined to keep their position in positioning themselves and they kept on fighting on their cause which is evil and they are determined to fight till the end. The instability and uncertainty that are happening right now requires unstable faith in the Lord. You know, we need to be more rooted in the faith. We have to have a deeper spiritual foundation by means of clinging more on to the Lord and on his words that on and not on the words and not on the works of this world and its own knowledge. Allow us uh, to encourage you all today to focus on our growth spiritually and be more rooted in the faith. And this is the best time for us to be more assertive of our faith. And tonight, I used to preach four hours in the Philippines, but I'm not going to do it tonight. Amen? <laughs> I was just kidding. There are three things that we need to be careful of. Number one, we have to be careful of about our hearts. Yes. About our heads or our minds. And let us be careful of about what we do in our hands. Yeah. In Philippians chapter number 4, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, Be careful for nothing, mm -hmm. but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, and let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We have to allow God to keep our hearts. Let us allow God to control our hearts. The Bible says in John 4 and 6, that is the only way, the truth, and the life. And the only way uh, to fix our broken lives and our broken hearts is for us to ask Him as our personal Lord and Savior. And I thank the Lord that He fixes my heart at a very young age. I got saved when I was just, uh, I came to know the Lord when I was just at the age of 9 and 10 years old. I don't know exactly the month and day, but I cannot forget the experience and the thing that take pla taken place in my heart. My teacher back then, uh, because I was her problem pupil, he put me at the very back end of the class. Uh, but she never forget to come and invite me in that little Bible study. I wasn't really interested at all, but before the school year ends, I showed up in the Bible study just to show up my face to her. And I came late, and when I came in, I heard a message I'd never heard before. I was born and raised as a Catholic, as such. We were made to believe that worshiping, worshiping thousands of idols and Mary and offering live animals will eventually lead us to our salvation. When I came in, the pastor was already preaching at the top of his lungs, and he was preaching about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin, and that he is the only way, the truth, and the life, and no one cometh unto the Father but by him. Amen. I was the last one who came, but the first one who walked down the aisle and accepted Christ as my personal Lord Amen. and Savior. You know what the world needs right now in their heart is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, right. 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 They don't need missiles. They don't need rackets and airstrikes. What the world needs is a spiritual strike Amen. Uh, from us who choose to have our faith rooted in the words of God. And you know what? God, the world needs this. We do know that uh, we are no longer counting minutes, nor hours, nor years, nor months. 
any moment. We are just waiting for the trump to sound. Amen. I am ready. I don't know about you, but I am ready yes, to face my Lord. I am ready to be with my Lord. Amen. But with this battle time and moment, we have to keep on keeping on. Yes. We have to continuously preach the word of God, go into the highways and edges, and compel them to come in. Let us guard the most vulnerable part of our lives, and that is our hearts. Let us focus our hearts on Jesus. Let us love Him just like the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 22, verse 37 to 39. The Bible says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Second, let us allow God to control our head or our mind. In, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, we all know this, that the Bible is the central authority of life's education. Not only that it teaches us to, about eternal life or about heaven, but it also teaches us to live in this world uh, a happy, abundant, and peaceful life uh, while we are enjoying the presence of God. And I thank God that we have the Holy Spirit. He always reminds us about His power. The most Powerful and effective men and women of God are those who are rooted in the faith. By way of knowing the deep things of God, and where could we get it? We can only get it from the words Amen. of God. What's in, what's in our minds exactly affects our decisions in life. I remember my teacher, though I wasn't saved then, but it's in every morning, he is... He is writing a, a verse in the Bible and he makes us uh, memorize it. He makes us uh, put, it, put it in our mind and in our hearts. And true enough, it never left me since then. Amen. I thank God that God gave me a godly teacher. You know, one wrong information, one wrong person that taught us to believe in a wrong principle can destroy us yeah. as a person. One wrong decision and everything will be over. You know, we, we do fly from the Philippines to the United States and when pastor asked me how long is the flight, I only say that it will, it will only take us about 15 minutes and 21 hours. <laughs> so it is long. Uh, the longest I'm in the air is about 15 hours, and that is long. But you know what? Uh, we, I am amazed with how the pilot navigates and brings us to our final, to our des designated destination. You know, in, in, in movies, they are showing the, the command center or the cockpit area where the pilot is sitting, seated along with his crews. And, you know, for a normal person, it is so hard to navigate thousands of buttons in front of him. But he is trained. He is learned. And he knew exactly what buttons to push, what instrument he needed to push when needed in order to make that big thing to fly and to be in the right destination. You know, as Christians, we served as pilots for souls. We have to feed our minds with the words of God in order for us to bring the gospel to the people so we could bring them to their rightful destination. Amen. And that is heaven. You know, there are so many false prophets around us teaching false teachings, giving false hope to people. We that are serving a powerful, a true, and a loving God. Amen. We have to be more knowledgeable 
in reaching those people for the cause of Christ. And lastly, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says, We are ward men that needed not to be ashamed. We can read that on the, on the second phrase. You know, these hands are expected by God <coughs> to work for God. And when we started the ministry way back in 1997, we went in Bata, about six hours away from uh, our, our hometown. It is infiltrated by communism. About 80% of the people that are living there doesn't believe in God at all. They have that ideology that there, there is no God, there, there is no God, and they don't believe in His words. And my life has been put in, in many times, put in line. I have been warned not to go there. But when God called you, you can, we can never say no to God. Amen. So we started with children. Adult people, I'm having a hard time talking with them with the Word of God. In the first place, they don't believe on it. There's just, there's just no connection. I'm trying to find a way to connect to them. So the best way I did was to look after their children. And I started bringing the Word of God to these little children, and their little children invited them to come to church. You know, the Word of God has its own power yeah, try to, to subdue the hearts of the people. We are committed to plant more churches in the next 20 years, as the Lord uh, provides. We are planning to start 100 more churches. And we have a Bible college right now. We are training men and women of God. And pastor, and also the pastor, if, he, if it's okay, if I could invite you to come to the Philippines. And uh, the Philippines is a fr friendly country. We have your language. We don't need interpreter in the Philippines. You can preach at the top of your lungs. 99% of my people can understand and can speak in English. It may be just a different accent the way we do it, but uh, we Filipinos, we are multilingual. We speak over 175 languages though. We, in our church, there are 20 different speaking people. I, I, I can only speak about 10 of them, but we have a national language called Tagalog, where everybody uses all over the country. And we have the longest uh, coastal line in the world. We have beautiful sand, sun, and beaches. And uh, our food are, are great. And most especially the people are loving and welcoming. And during the pandemic, we weren't allowed to have church. I don't know if that happens here, but in the Philippines, it was all over. They let us all down. But God uses a pandemic to soften the heart of the people. Prior to pandemic, we were just running over 150, 250 on Good Sunday. But right after pandemic, we're not get, getting 200 anymore, no more 250, but we start to get 300, Amen. 400, Amen. Amen. and our top Amen. attendance was 700. Our church is only as big as this place, but we are having three services on Sundays. God has been good, Amen. and we want to take this opportunity to lead as many people to the Lord. Right now, God allowed us to buy a small property, about three acres. And we are building a, a, a multi-purpose hall that can, that can fit over a thousand people. And uh, on the adjacent lot, we are going to build a home for the children and orphanage. And the reason why we're here in the United States is we are trying to raise uh, $150,000 for us to start the building. Right now, we are now uh, doing the fencing. We have to do the perimeter fence. We are a poor country and we are not exempted from robbery and theft. So we have to, for security, we have to do first the, uh, the fencing. But uh, that's really expensive. Right now we are short of $40,000. And that is one thing that we want to raise. And also, 20 more churches that can take us on for a regular support every month. Well, thank you so much for having us tonight. Thank you for having my son and taking him on as one of your missionaries. 
And if it's not uh, a big thing to us, if you can squeeze us in on your mission program, we would like to appeal that uh, if you can take us on as one of your uh, supported missionaries in the Philippines, we would appreciate that so much. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Amen. Good evening, everyone.